Greetings Animal Crossing fans, I'm Eurogamer's Ian Higton, and this is Swindon's magnificent Trash Mountain, the place where all your garbage goes to die. Now, sure, it may not be the prettiest of locations, but it seems like a fitting place to start this video, because today I'm going to be digging into the darker side of Animal Crossing New Horizons by checking out the creepiest characters in the game. Now, it's worth pointing out before we start that, while at first glance many of these characters may look a little bit weird, most of them are deeply adored by a lot of you players out there. Now, I understand that, I really do, but while my top 10 most popular villagers videos are based on a huge public poll, this one here is based largely on personal opinion, so please accept my apologies if you think I've treated one of your favourite villagers unfairly. One person's trash is another person's treasure and all that, and as you can see here, I know what I'm talking about in that regard. Anyway, with all that said and done, let's get on with the show and count down the top 20 creepiest villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons, starting from number 20. At first glance, Zucker here may not look that creepy. Sure, he's a slimy octopus and he's got these weird green blotches on his cheeks that make it look a little bit like he's been crying bogeys, but apart from that, well, he's pretty cute, right? Wrong. You see, Zucker's whole look is based on the famous Japanese seafood snack takoyaki, in which minced octopus bits are wrapped in a dough ball and then fried. Don't believe me? Well, that stick hanging out the back of Zucker's head there represents the bamboo toothpick that you traditionally eat takoyaki with, while his hair resembles the takoyaki sauce that is normally drizzled all over the top of the treats. Oh, and those green freckle things on his cheeks? They mimic the takoyaki's green onion seasonings, which leads us to two creepy conclusions. One, Zucker's head contains the minced up parts of his octopus pals, which is proper grim. And two, Zucker is trying to make himself look so delicious that other villagers would want to eat him. Honestly, I've heard of looking good enough to eat, but dressing yourself up as a dinner made out of your mates in order to sacrifice yourself to others on the island is just plain ridiculous. <laughs> Like the majority of villagers who appear on this list, Kat here is an utter sweetheart, and her sisterly personality type means that she'll always treat you and most of your other villagers with respect. This is lovely and all, and I can see why this has earned Kat a legion of fans, but there's something about her that just doesn't sit quite right with me. And no, I'm not talking about those jaundice coloured eyes, which quite frankly sit way too close together to be biologically possible. Nope, for me, the creepiest thing about Kat has to be her ever-present fangs, which, quite frankly, make me worry that she might actually be a vampire. Not only could this explain why she's always one of the last villagers up at night, but also it might be why she wears a black leather jacket as her default outfit. I mean, come on, you can't get more The Lost Boys than a red and black colour scheme, can you? Face it, you're a creature of the night, Kat just like out of a comic book. Moose the Mouse is one of those villagers that instantly feel shifty the moment you lay your eyes on them. His big, bushy, mutton-chop sideburns and jelly roll pompadour haircut are weird enough as it is, especially when sat atop his pale blue fur. But the combination of all of these things, along with his constant quizzical look, is where I draw the line. Moose's non-stop eyebrow raise and his consistent I'm smarter than you smirk give me the impression that he's always looking at me with disdain. Almost like he thinks he's better than me, and you're not, Mouse Boy, because I have opposable thumbs, so meh. Sorry to all you moose fans out there, but this is one moose I never want to have loose around my hoose. <laughs> Personality-wise, Hazel here is lovely to talk to, and to be honest with you, I think she actually looks pretty cute, but still, there's something about her that rubs me up the wrong way. 
Some people might think I'm referring to her massive monobrow here, and in a way I kind of am, but not in the way you would think. I actually don't mind her unibrow, I don't think there's anything wrong with having one, and neither does Hazel. In fact, she's pretty proud of it because her trademark phrase in New Horizons is uni-wow, and she'll fit it into a conversation whenever she has the chance. Actually, the thing that bothers me the most is the way that her massive mono falls in front of her face, forming a sinister frown which, quite honestly, makes me feel a little bit paranoid. I don't know, I just get the feeling that she's hatching some evil scheme behind my back and it's only a matter of time until she snaps and unleashes a world of hurt. Is it wrong of me to feel like she's plotting my downfall, do you think? Or am I just being hazel nuts? Oh my, Chester really is quite haunting, isn't he? His face is a constant mask of sadness, his pasty panda skin mixed with his rosy red cheeks give him the look of a creepy mime artist, and that mouth, oh god, that downturned mouth, stretching across his face like a vengeful coat hanger from hell, his gaping maw is a constant source of terror for me, and no more so than when he decides to bare all of his teeth during a conversation. <laughs> Yikes! I'm sorry to all of you out there who love Chester, but to me, he feels like a sad lost spirit who's stuck in limbo, forever haunting the bamboo forest that wraps around his living room. Honestly, if you hold a piece of bamboo up to your ear late in the summertime, sometimes when the wind is just right, I'm pretty sure you can hear Chester howling. <laughs> Lucky the dog has a lot of things going for him. He's a dog for one, which is always a winner in my book, and he's got the lazy personality type, which means he's super easy going and will get along with almost anyone. The trouble is, for every one of Lucky's positives, there always seems to be at least one creepy negative, with the most noticeable of all being his full body plaster cast. How on earth did this porson pooch end up getting so badly injured that he's wrapped head to toe in bandages? It feels like there's some tragic backstory here that we're not privy to, and that just makes things seem even more sinister. Worse than that, though, what's up with that solitary glowing yellow eye? That's not exactly normal, is it? Is Lucky actually a dead dog that has somehow been reanimated, like some kind of cursed Egyptian mummy or something? Worst of all, though, why is his default house in New Horizons a frickin' graveyard, a.k.a. the creepiest of places to live? Lucky may be the goodest of good boys to some people, but my word does he have some explaining to do. One of our viewers once described Klaus to me as an ancient Roman cosplaying bathroom pervert, and that seems to fit him pretty well actually, because although I've admittedly never seen it myself, I have heard multiple reports of Klaus straight up inviting people into his Roman bathhouse inspired abode, and then just shamelessly going for a poo in front of them. Sure, the audacity of it all has to be admired, but continually going to the toilet in front of people in real life would be heavily frowned upon, to say the least. Just because you're in a video game doesn't mean it's okay to invite people to poop parties, Klaus. You big creeper. <laughs> Considering Animal Crossing New Horizons is supposed to be a game all about kindness, it seems weird to me that there'd be a character in here like Canberra the Koala, who is pulling a facial expression that quite clearly suggests that she wants to kick your head in. Personality-wise, she's adorable, but she's got the wild eyes of a drunk thug in a bar who's just about to shout, What are you looking at? And, well, I definitely wasn't looking at you, Canberra. Honest. Oh, God, no, please don't hurt me. <laughs> 
I'm sure that if you spend enough time with Canberra, you'll be able to see her softer side. But whenever I'm around her, I can't help but feel like I'm about five minutes away from getting bottled. <laughs> One look at Wart Jr. tells you all you need to know about why this cranky frog has made it onto this list. Wart Jr. is covered head to toe in warts, so along with being a cranky personality type, he's also slimy and lumpy too, which really is not the most welcoming of combinations. Wart Jr. is pretty much the polar opposite of what most people are looking for in a cute villager, so it's no wonder that players want to get rid of him as soon as he appears on their islands. I mean, come on, look what he does with his mouth when he's asking you a question. Is he about to spit in my face or something? Sorry, Wart Jr. fans, but this toad can stay in his hole because he's creepy as hell and he looks a little bit like a poo with eyes. <laughs> In terms of traditional creepiness, Coco the rabbit is way up there because, from what I can gather, Coco is actually the ghost of a dead villager who's inhabiting and animating a clay replica of her ex-body. Those of you out there who have never seen Coco before may be wondering what's up with the face of this haunted hollow-headed horror as she's only got deep black holes where her eyes and mouth should be. Well, her expressionless visage is actually reminiscent of gyroids. You know, the things you have to give donations to when you're adding bridges or slopes to your island. Gyroids are based on something called haniwa, which were small terracotta clay figurines that were buried with the dead in Japan between the 3rd and 6th centuries. In some haniwa, the ashes from the dead were mixed into the clay of the statue, which could explain those imperfections we see on Coco's coat. Basically, this means that not only is Coco a ghost, but also that she wears her human remains as some kind of fashion accessory, which is textbook Creepsville, if you ask me. <laughs> Jambet is a green frog character with giant pink human lips, and I just can't, alright? She's got human lips, and they're massive! I've heard of kissing a frog to make a prince before, but if you tried to give Jambet a snog, she'd swallow you whole. I've got nothing against her personality-wise, believe me, but she looks like she's had back-alley cosmetic surgery on her face flaps, and the juxtaposition of these balloon-like lips alongside her amphibian form, quite honestly, sets my teeth on edge. You jam better believe I'll be avoiding any islands she inhabits from now on. <laughs> Oh look, a lovely cute bunny rabbit is what I imagine you'd be thinking if Gaston suddenly appeared on your island. But then you'd approach him from behind and as you did he'd turn around and you'd be all like, yikes! That's not the face of a cute rabbit my friends, that is the face of a serial killer from the 1970s. The mean brow, the bright red drunkard's nose and the incredibly dodgy tash are bad enough, but also he lives in some kind of dilapidated murder hovel that has cardboard furniture. Look, I'm pretty sure I managed to escape Gaston's house by the skin of my teeth and I reckon if I'd have stayed there any longer he would probably have turned me into a lampshade or something. So if you value your safety, I'd keep well away from this raging rabbit. I find it really hard to put into words why Barrel the Bear creeps me out so much, but I, I think it's something to do with the fact that he looks like a divorced geography teacher who's decided to cosplay as a circus strongman during his midlife crisis. His bizarre facial features are all smushed together right in the centre of his big round head, and it's all oddly framed by this rather weird beard, which has the unexpected effect of making him look like a background character from an episode of South Park. 
To be honest with you though, the thing that creeps me out the most about Barold are his bright pink lips. They really stand out against the grey fur of his coat, and when he's talking at pace, they flap around on his face like a fleshy windsock in a hurricane. Ugh, horrifying. <laughs> The thing about most Animal Crossing characters is that, even when they look a little bit creepy, you know that deep down they're actually absolute sweethearts. But Rasha? I'm not so sure about him. This grumpy pig lives in a literal car park that's full of uncomfortable items like rusty barrels and iron girders. It's not just his house that's an utter car crash though. Rasha's body is covered in scars, the most prominent of which can be found above his right eye and on the back of his head. In my mind, he's an ex-con. Think a porky child Bronson who sustained these knife wounds in a vicious prison brawl. Now he's out and about and back on Animal Crossing Island, it's plain to see he's trying to redeem himself by fixing up some cars on the side. But still, the scars don't lie, and they tell a terribly creepy tale. <laughs> Al, the lazy gorilla here, is quite a shocker to look at, not only due to his immense size, but also to the fact that his lime green skin makes it look like he's got food poisoning and he's about to spew his guts up. I try my best not to judge the Animal Crossing characters entirely on appearance alone, which is why it's so nice to talk to Al, because you can instantly spot his softer side. He's so easy to talk to, he's ever so friendly, and he loves talking about relaxing and sleeping, which are two of my favourite hobbies. So, why is he so high on this list then, Ian, you may be asking? Well, for some inexplicable reason, Al insists on strutting around your island with his sickly green bum cheeks hanging out of his fur pants for everyone to see. And that's just not on. Put it away, Al, for crying out loud. Honestly, the absolute bare-faced cheek of it all. <laughs> There's really no sugarcoating this next entry on this list because Limburg here is an utter mess. He basically looks like he's fallen straight out of an episode of Shameless and into Animal Crossing by the way of bargain booze. His creepy five o'clock shadow and flush red cheeks make it look like Limburg has been drowning his sorrows on a bench ever since the local park opened at 10am and you can just imagine him sat there on his own tanning a few cans of special brew whilst chaining a pack of B&H Super Kings. I mean, come on, he's even got the voice of someone who burns through at least 40 a day. Limburg has this unmistakably creepy vibe about him, but he's perhaps the most Swindon of all the villagers in the game, so I might just cut him some slack and invite him to move in with me. Honestly, I think it'd be a match made in heaven. <laughs> Where, oh, where to start with Rodney? Oh my word. This is a villager that has been creeping people out ever since he first appeared in New Leaf, and it's not unheard of to have players begging for him to leave their island. But why? Well, his sickly complexion and fury-inducing facial expressions don't help, that's for sure, but it's his weird, tired eyes with purple bags underneath and his aggravating smirk that really great, serving only to magnify the annoyance brought on by his smug personality type. Rodney strikes me as the kind of villager who would most likely be an internet troll in the real world, maladying his way through life like a tepid fart that just won't go away. Sure, there has to be some people out there who find Rodney cute, but in my humble opinion, those people are wrong. <laughs> Now, I'm pretty sure there'll be plenty of people out there who are shocked right now by how high Lyman has appeared on this list. But let me tell you right now, in my opinion, he deserves it. Everyone who's played Animal Crossing New Horizons has a nemesis. A villager they can't wait to get rid of, but who just won't leave. And Lyman was mine, man. 
This plague-ridden koala bear refused to leave my island for about two months, and it did my head in. Even after I built fortifications around his house and refused to speak to him for about four weeks, he still tried to get close to me and breathe all his plague germs onto my paws. I complained about him to Isabel, I put up warning signs, and hell, I even gave him a fair few bonks on his bonce with a fishing net. But still, this gains-hungry gainer just wouldn't take no for an answer. The day Lyman finally decided to move out of my island was the best day of my Animal Crossing life. And as an added bonus, as soon as he left his house, Marina moved in and she is wonderful. Lyman, goodbye man. I don't think it will come as a surprise to anyone watching this video that Pietro, the multicoloured nightmare clown, is right up near the top of this list. Pietro is perhaps the most divisive villager who's ever existed, and while some people do find him adorable, those who find him creepy find him extra creepy. And it's not just his alarming clown-like get-up that's disturbing. Even his backstory is quite chilling because, according to the AC Wiki, Pietro is named after an Italian playwright who reportedly died from laughing himself to death, which is like a totally normal and not creepy place to get your naming inspiration from. Right? Wrong. For people with a deep fear of clowns, Pietro's standard facial expressions are probably bad enough, what with his prison tattoo eye makeup, big red lips and tiny dead eyes. But even I recoiled in horror at Pietro's face when he lost his temper with me. Huh. Sure, he can look quite innocent when he wants to, but when the mask slips and you see the true Pietro emerge from behind the makeup like Pennywise from a sewer system, it's the dictionary definition of creepy. And finally, the number one creepiest villager in Animal Crossing is... Half the Hippie, who runs the Photopia Photography Studio. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Ian, Half isn't technically a villager. And yes, you'd be right. But in all seriousness, what's more creepy than a strange man, and an older looking man come to think of it, who invites you back to his own private island for a solo photography session? Nothing, that's what. Seriously kids, never say yes to that kind of offer, because this peculiar pooch has more red flags than the Red Flag Factory on Red Flag Friday. Think I'm wrong? Then step inside his studio where things just get worse. This ew-tastic casting couch set up in the living room should be more than enough to make most sensible people run for the hills, but it's his creepy basement lair that really gives me the chills. <sighs> this is Buffalo Bill AF. Get me out of here. Harve may not be your traditional villager, I'll admit, but there's no denying that he's by far the creepiest character in the game. And that, my friends, is that. Those were the 20 creepiest villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons, according to me. But which villagers do you find the most unsettling? Are they already on this list, or have I missed out on one that makes your blood run cold? Let us know in the comments below, and just in case you're wondering, I did consider adding Zippity Bunny to this list, but as he's long gone now, I decided to leave him off. Fingers crossed, he never returns. Anyway, as always, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and please do subscribe to Eurogamer for more Animal Crossing videos coming soon. If you haven't had your fill of AC yet, by the way, there are some more videos for you to click on on screen now. So, goodbye, and good Animal Crossing gink. Oh, great. Good work, Ian. You messed up your outro again. Why am I always like this? Oh, well, I'd better get back to tending my tyre fire, I guess. Those tyres aren't going to light themselves, are they? God, I've got a lot of them now, don't I? I hope they don't fall on me and trap me.